Hey dreamers, welcome to Steamwork Nature Spotlight. You'll know your pulp is ready when it looks and feels like the paper form of oatmeal. And voila, you have a wet sheet of handmade paper. Hey, I'm Christina from National Children's Museum and today we're making our very own paper. It's estimated that between 80,000 and 160,000 trees are cut down every day just to make paper. Those trees are used to make paper for the mail that we receive, the newspapers and magazines we read, and all of the cards, letters, and drawings that we make and we send to our friends and family. But that's a lot of paper, which means that's a lot of trees, which means that's a lot of deforestation and a lot of habitat loss for many, many animals. However, paper can be recycled and turned into new paper an average of five to seven times. By creating and using recycled paper, we're helping limit deforestation and protecting the habitat of forest dwelling animals. Hooray! So let's jump into making our very own recycled paper and protecting habitats by gathering all the supplies we need in order to get started. And as you can probably already tell, paper making is a very involved process. It's also pretty messy. So I recommend doing this activity outdoors. You'll need paper, a pair of scissors, a wooden paper mold and deckle, but if you don't have that, I'll show you how to make one using some foil and a plastic container lid. An immersion blender or a regular blender. If you don't have an extra blender of any kind, you can use a good old bowl, spoon, and fork like me. A tub or container larger than your mold and deckel filled with water, a sponge, brayer, or rolling pin, an old towel, or you could use a few old t-shirts, scrap fabric, or cleaning cloths, just as long as it's something absorbent. Be sure these are not the same appliances you use to make food. You'll get started by ripping or cutting any large sheets of paper into small pieces, no bigger than two inch by two inch squares. Once your paper is all cut up into scraps, put them in a large bowl or right into your blender. Take a few cups of water from your tub of water to soak your paper. Use your spoon to stir the paper to ensure all the paper is evenly covered. If your paper absorbs the water quickly, you can add a little more water, like I did. Make sure every piece of paper is completely wet, and then let the paper soak in the water for at least a few hours to allow the fibers to soften. Once the paper has been soaked long enough, you'll use your spoon and fork to break down the wet paper, working it into a mushy pulp. You may want to add more water like I did and use your hands to help make the process easier and faster. You'll know your pulp is ready when it looks and feels like the paper form of oatmeal. Once you're happy with the pulp's consistency, prepare your mold. Start by placing your mold and deckle into the tub of water. Then pour or place the pulp into the mold. It's okay if the pulp floats into the water, it happens. But if you don't want to lose any of your precious paper pulp, make sure the water in your tub is just deep enough to barely cover your deckel. While your pulp and mold are in the water, take this time to spread out the larger chunks and make sure the pulp is spread as evenly as possible in the mold. Remove the pulp filled mold and deckel straight out of the water. Remove the deckel and place your towel or whatever absorbent material you choose on top of the mold, then flip everything over and place it on your flat workspace. The towel is absorbing any water coming off your paper mold, but the pulp still contains a lot of water, so you can use a brayer to remove excess water by pressing firmly as you roll over the mesh of your mold. If you don't have a brayer, using a sponge to blot off water works just fine. Once you feel like you've squeezed out enough water, remove the mold and voila! You have a wet sheet of handmade paper. If you don't have a traditional mold and deckle, you can make your own using a plastic container lid, some foil, and a fork. With this method, the plastic lid will serve as your deckel and the foil will serve as your mold. First, start by measuring and cutting a piece of foil that is a little more than double the width of your plastic lid. Fold your foil in half, then use your fork to poke some holes through both layers of the foil. Next, place the foil over your plastic lid. The foil should be slightly longer than the lid on all sides. Take the edges of the foil that hang over the lid and create sides that come up a bit and then tuck each side back down. Leave a little foil overhang to be able to secure the foil to the lid. 
Repeat on all sides until you have what looks like a holy foil box. Place the lid and the foil in the tub. Place the pulp in the foil mold, being careful not to bend down the sides. The box-like sides of the foil helps the pulp stay in the mold, and securing the foil to the lid helps prevent the foil from sagging under the weight of the pulp. Make sure the pulp is spread evenly and to your liking. Then lift the lid and foil out of the water together. Just like with the mold and decal, place your towel or whatever absorbent material you choose to use on top of the mold, then flip everything over and place it on your flat work surface. Remove the foil from the plastic lid, pulling the box-like sides flat, and then remove the lid. Just like with the mold and decal, blot the foil with a sponge or use a brayer to remove water. Because the foil is relatively flat, you can also use a rolling pin to go over the foil mesh and squeeze out water. Once you feel like you've removed enough water, carefully peel off the foil and voila! You have a wet sheet of handmade paper using a plastic lid and foil mold and decal. If you're working outside, you can leave your wet paper on your work surface to dry, or you can move it to a sunny spot and leave it there for a few hours. Otherwise, leave your paper flat to dry overnight. While your paper is drying, this is the perfect time to add different design elements to your final product. The fun part about making recycled paper is that the possibilities of what it looks like, what you put into it, and how you design it are plenty. You can add different materials to your pulp, like glitter, dry flowers, yarn scraps, tea leaves, or essential oils to provide color, texture, or even scents to your paper. Tell us what you've included in your recycled paper design and show us your finished product by tagging us on social media and using the hashtag Steamwork. Thanks for joining me today, dreamers. And let's remember, Steamwork makes a dream work and we're all in this together. See you real soon.